My name is Trevor Walker. Uh, I attended the University of Texas here for my undergrad. Came here as a freshman in 2006. Finished up with my undergrad degree in civil engineering in the summer of 2010. That fall of 2010, I enrolled in graduate school in civil engineering, specifically geotechnical engineering. And now I'm in my last semester of my master's degree, planning to finish up in May. Okay, well, a degree in civil, civil engineering, um, it's going to give you a broad range of all different types of work. For example, civil, civil engineering deals with structures, so you'll be dealing with concrete and steel. It deals with soil and rock stability. So you look down at the ground, you know, you may think it's really boring, but it's really technical. Um, then you have water resources, so you think of flood control. When it rains, where does the water go? What do you do with it? You have environmental engineering, which deals with, okay, you have all this waste coming from a city. How do you treat it? What do you do after that? And then you have project management, where it's more on the construction side of, okay, we have to build this building. We have to build this project. What's the best way to do it um, the most efficiently and the cheapest way? So civil engineering is very broad. So here at the University of Texas, they give you um, brief exposure to each one of these as you go through the major. And then kind of your last semester or two, you kind of get to choose uh, the, which direction you want to take as far as your elective classes in those different areas that I described. Okay, I pursued a degree in civil engineering because growing up, I always liked math and science. I always did well in it. I thought it was interesting. So I was thinking, okay, I want to do civil engineering, even though I really didn't quite know what it was. But I suggest to people that are very interested in math and science, especially, especially how uh, physical principles work of maybe how a building is able to stand or maybe if you're a little kid and you're playing with Legos and, and like to build things, um, just if you're interested in physics and how forces work and, and things like that, I would definitely say a civil engineering route is a great way to go, especially if you want to deal with large scale projects. Civil engineering projects always range in the multi-million dollar projects. So if you want to work large scale and really help society and the infrastructure of society, that's really a great way to go. So it's good if you like math and science. Also, if you want to help society become uh, better, more technical, more advanced, it's also a good way to go also. So once you get a degree in civil engineering, you have several options. The option I took was to go to grad school because I wanted to learn more about civil engineering and be more specialized in a certain area of civil engineering. So that's why I chose to pursue a master's degree. I highly recommend it, um, but obviously a lot of people go out and work. With a degree in civil engineering, um, it gives you a lot of options. For example, you can work in a consulting route with a private company. You can work with the government, as such, such as a state or federal agency. For example, we have Texas Department of Transportation here. My research currently is a joint project with them. So they have civil engineers on staff, and you work with the state. Obviously, that has benefits of its own. Um, on the other hand, you can also go the military route. Military is always building things in remote places. They always need engineers to construct bases and do this and that. So with a degree in civil engineering, you have several options, and um, all of them are really good. So uh, the typical course load and course progression as you go uh, through getting your civil engineering degree is, one, your first and second year are going to be covering the basics. For example, you have your physics, one and two. You have your chem, one and two. You have your calculus, one, two, and three. So that's going to lay the groundwork for everything that you do after that. Okay, moving on from there, you kind of get into your statics and dynamics where you get into forces and how they interact with one another and doing force free body diagrams. Um, and then once you get past that, then you start getting into your intro level courses to civil engineering. So you have intro to environmental engineering, intro to structural engineering, so on and so forth. So the professors will give you just a little taste of the different aspects of civil engineering. So as you get a little taste of each aspect of civil engineering, then that's when you have, you have your discretion to choose what electives you want to take. Okay, so you took intro to environmental engineering or intro to geotech. 
okay, and you really like that. Now you get into your electives and you get to choose, okay, I want to take a more advanced class in environmental engineering or geotechnical engineering. So that's kind of the progression of how it goes. So as far as classes that you could take as a high school student to benefit you in college, for sure take the AP courses, especially AP Physics, AP Calculus, AP Chemistry, because you're going to be seeing all those things again your first and second years of college. So it's not necessarily civil engineering, but those basic principles carry over as far as how physics work, interaction between objects, calculus, you know, doing differential, well, not differential equations, but, you know, integration and differentiation and stuff like that. So those will carry with you throughout your college career. Um, another helpful course that I took in high school was CAD drafting. So AutoCAD, um, they had a strong vocational program where I come from in high school. So I took two years of that, and it has definitely helped me throughout my uh, career here at the University of Texas with my civil engineering. So I definitely recommend some kind of drafting software class also. The advice I would give is there is a stereotype that many high school students have to what college is about. They think that I'm just going to go up and you know, get my degree, live it up, and once I have my piece of paper, I'm golden for the rest of my life. For me, that was kind of my idea coming in, except I had a little bit more stress on the academic side going into civil engineering. Um, but I found out that in my college life so far, I've been on the campus six years, that uh, I feel like I've really matured as a person. And going through different circumstances uh, with athletics and academics simultaneously, that I feel like those circumstances had really allowed me to grow and mature as an individual. I met my wife in college. Um, I got married last year. And so I'm really thankful for all these good things that uh, were used to really help benefit me as a person. So um, I would take advantage of the college years to allow them to really shape and grow you into who you'll be for the rest of your life.